But the one that we've been trading now for two days in a row that is finally waking up, guys, is NVIDIA. And today was a perfect example how money flow, right? How money flow from the option side. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, Happy New Year everybody. Welcome to uh, the first of many, hopefully, of many uh, AccessToTrader.com nightly updates for uh, 2021. Um, I apologize, I did not have a chance to uh, record a nightly video yesterday. Uh, in the afternoon, my daughter comes up to my wife and she says, Mommy, I feel hot. Obviously, in this day and age, uh, we take a temperature. She has a little bit of an uptick in temperature. What do we do? Frantically, we, we run to uh, the pediatrician. They did uh, a strep test, a, COVID, a rapid COVID test, and the flu. Uh, luckily, everything came back, uh, everything came back negative. Uh, knock on wood, so I apologize for uh, not recording a video yesterday. So this is actually the first video of 2021, and I, I want the kind of guys uh, to kind of get you guys set up uh, for the well, not necessarily for the year, but for at least for tomorrow. Uh, and we got we have to st start out from the technical point of view. So what we talked about on the video over the weekend is again all these expectations. You guys remember that in the video uh, from the weekend? All these expectations a lot of traders have. The futures gapped up yesterday really aggressively. Everybody couldn't wait. This is the year. We're going to kill it. We're going to kill it. We're going to kill it. One of the biggest rug pulls uh, we've seen uh, in a very, very long time yesterday. Really big move, uh, not only on the Qs, but all the major uh, indexes. The Dow Jones was down uh, about a 600 and change at, at one point. Now, again, if you've been actively uh, trading the market for the last several weeks and kind of watching these updates, you, you kind of know they would have been taking down uh, the really big high flyers. That's why we continue to kind of tell people all the time, stay away from the ones that are in the moon, right? Not named Tesla. We'll get to that in a second. Like, stay away from those. Those are the ones who get pulled first. And if you saw that they're really big damage uh, over the last week or so, you saw how bad these names were, right? Amazon got pulled literally, what? Got pulled, what, 300, three, almost 300 points? Uh, Netflix, they were just, they were literally taking them down uh, one by one. You had Netflix pull from all the way from two, 45 all the way down uh, very, very aggressively. You know, one after the other after the other. Um, and, and I think a lot of traders really woke up to kind of the words uh, that I was saying, especially going into uh, the weekend update. Uh, but if you look at what's going on, and there's a lot of news to kind of digest. At least we have macro-wise levels that we can at least trade from or at least use as reference to kind of go forward. Uh, tonight, we have the Georgia elections, uh, the whole Senate thing. It's going to be a big one, right? So the market is waiting for uh, some sort of some sort of sign, some sort of election result to see what's going to happen next. Is there going to be uh, an additional tax raises for this? Whatever the outcome is, the market wants to kind of embrace everything. Uh, after the close, you had another uh, pretty aggressive price target hike uh, by Morgan Stanley on Tesla. Tesla, again, is absolutely going nuts here uh, after the close above 750 as well. So a lot of things are going on. And right now, this is one of the more chicken without a head type of markets that we're seeing. Again, if you guys remember, through all of 2020, uh, crazy, ridiculous mo money flow was going into small cap names, uh, SPACs, EVs, everything. And if you look what's going on in the last 24 hours, every literally every like 30, 40 cent stock is being bid up. And it really does show you how much staying power the market speculation crowd is still in there. But you have to be very careful. And, and, I, and, I, and I've been tweeting about this relentlessly for a long, long time. Look, guys, if you want to be, if you want to do this for a living, and again, I, I've said this in, in so many different ways. If you want to do this, whether it's part-time, full-time, whatever the case may be, you have to stop chasing stocks, okay? There's a way to trade speculation money flow. Like, for example, ISR, here was the channel. You don't buy it up here. You don't buy it up here because, again, you're in God's hands. And a lot of people, you know, they, they want it. They, they're making all the right statements. I want to be a professional trader. I want to do this for a very long time. But their actions are still 
very, very similar to a lot of traders who've been exiting this business very, very rapidly before they kind of reach their potential. And the first thing, you know, order of business was a stock like this SYN, right? You know, it had a big move yesterday. Again, this was the channel, right? If anything, this was the channel. You don't buy it up here. And again, slowly but surely, you have a next generation of people chasing stocks all over the place. And next thing you know, they're coming crashing down. Guys, again, you don't need to listen to my advice. You could trade these things. Absolutely. There's a time and a place for these things. But, but take advantage of technical levels. There's no way on earth you could convince a professional trader if a stock was 50 cents yesterday. How can you buy it at $1.50? How can you buy it at $1.70, right? And, the, and the, you know, the answer, the short answer to that is, well, Dan, it's the environment that we're in. The stock is going to 10. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a position that you're getting lucky, literally chasing stocks in a, in a very aggressive musical chair environment that you're hoping to God after every single trade, you still have a seat involved, right? Please, look, if you're going to be any type of trader in this type of a market a year from now, five years from now, you have to control yourself, okay? You, you have to trade on levels, whether you're trading Tesla, uh, a 50 cent stock, a $20 stock, you have to trade off levels that make technical sense, that you have an advantage, that you know buying pressure will come in. Again, it's very, very easy to buy something up 300% for the day it goes up once, you make money. You goes twice, you make money. The third time, you lose half your account because, again, how can you survive? Again, unless you're trading literally 50 shares, 100 shares, 1,000 shares, how can you survive with any type of size buying a stock at 150 knowing it came from 50 cents and watch it go down 60 70% into the close? And if you look at what's happening after the close, it's down another 15, 20 cents. So, again, guys, just be careful. If you really want to be serious about your trading career, you have to start acting responsibly. Guys, there's so much easier ways to gamble. Like there's a slew of NBA games tonight, right? You could play the money line on any game tonight. Be careful, okay? This is trading. It's not supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be exciting. This is fun, right? This is fun, and this is unfortunately very, very scary. And unfortunately, for every stock that does go from 50 cents to a dollar, there's a lot of war stories that you hear. Unfortunately, traders that made money in those names completely blow out their accounts. So be very, very careful. As far as technical views to kind of go over, and this is more, much more important than any individual plays going into tomorrow's session, we, we have defined levels where the market really needs to really needs to make a claim. And if you look at a lot of names, especially in the beta names, they're kind of in a holding pattern. And when you get a candle that goes from 315 all the way down to 305, it's going to create a lot of technical damage and there's going to create a lot of apprehension in a lot of names. So for example, if you go one by one, you can see what I'm talking about. If you look at Amazon, it's stuck in this channel. You see all the supply? Okay, so for Amazon to really wake up, it's going to need to reclaim this 3250 area. Netflix, again, which the market, you know, it came out with really good news last night. Uh, they talked about record viewership for December. They could have ran Netflix today, and they didn't. Look how much supply there is. So for Netflix to get over, it's going to need to reclaim supply. Apple, who got sold off pretty aggressively, right, just in the last week or so, again, look how much room and in, in, look how much work the stock has to do just to get above, right, just to get a, a, just breathing again. So beta, the, the high-tech beta names, they're not out of the woods, not even close. So they're going to need to get a lot of work for these things to just kind of come back into life. The one good one that I really like, and not even just one, a lot of the semi names are really waking up that are pretty good. Look at AMAT, right? AMAT had a really, really huge run uh, all the way from November, consolidated for the last month or so. This thing is ready to tap the channel. But the one that we've been trading now for two days in a row that is finally waking up, guys, is NVIDIA. And today was a perfect example how money flow, right? How money flow from the option side uh, when you get option flow and you get a range break, when it comes together, it's purely magic. Yesterday, NVIDIA finally came out of the range. Today was a perfect sneaky channel. A lot of buyers are still coming in for short-term expiration on the 550s. Uh, we even saw a couple weeks ago really good sized buyers in NVIDIA on the Feb 600s. And now we're just literally, this is the first time the stock has a pulse, literally a pulse in the last two months. All it needs to do is clean out the supply that it made a couple of days ago and take out this whole range that started on 11, November, the, November the 12th 
And this could really be the next one. But again, it might not happen tomorrow. It might not happen this week. So it might not happen. But the point is we're not trying to guess when the, when the run's going to happen. We have a point of reference here. And if this thing starts taking out those levels, and again, maybe tomorrow, maybe this week, maybe next week, maybe never. Again, we don't anticipate a trade. But when this thing does, you can see the potential uh, what NVIDIA has. And that's kind of where we want to talk about uh, some, of these, you know, some of these NASDAQ ETFs. We have a clear line in the sand. And this is very, very important to kind of go forward. Number one, we know a lot of the beta mega cap names are still stuck in channels. So for them to move higher, for them to kind of resume their very aggressive buying nature, they're going to need to reclaim specific levels. And the NASDAQ 100 is exactly going to mirror that. And this is the big level right here. Okay, if you believe in the inside day theory on the bear case, then you say to yourself, well, this is kind of a res day for the next avalanche for the market to take it lower, right? If you would believe in the bull case, then the Qs need to reclaim this 312, 313 level and go right back to the channel here. If you believe in the bear case, then this 305 level is going to be super important going forward. Again, if you're a swing trader and you see this 305 level get confirmed from the previous day selling, you got to get the hell out of Dodge. Okay, that's the first thing. You got to get the hell out of Dodge because, again, when there's an avalanche and there's a confirmation that more selling is going to come, these are stocks have incredible average true range. They're not just going to sit there and let you sit there watching your stocks trade in 20 cent range. Stocks are going to get pulled, right? All you have to look, to look at any stock that got pulled in the last week. These were a monster, monster selling, right? You had Shop getting destroyed. You had Facebook, right? Just getting absolutely shelled. You can see these daily charts just really, really get hit. Facebook, Apple, Beyond, uh, really aggressive channels. So for us to kind of make a stake and you believe in the bullish theory, again, QQQs, we need to close uh, over this 312 level with a hindsight, uh, with a hindsight, hopefully it will never come, but a hindsight pivot of 305 back to the downside. Uh, if you look at the SPY, right, SPY, kind of the same thing scenario. Again, the only reason the SPY stopped at this 364 because this is the rising uh, Bollinger Band. So if this thing starts getting violated, we're going to see the test of the 50-day moving average. So before you know, you, you wake up tomorrow and you have your game plan, and again, there are a lot of bullish charts to look out there. Tesla, again, is going nuts. NVIDIA, I, I really, really like. I needed to see it get bigger levels to start confirming levels. But again, Square woke up today, right? Square woke up, closed over the 10-day moving average. It needs to confirm prices. A lot of names, a lot of new SPAC names, like Skills, for example, right? You have uh, ARK Invest investments uh, staking. They, they have a position in this thing. This thing literally is maybe one or two days of breaking out as well. So there's a lot of value still on the upside of the market. But again, on the flip side, there's a lot of value in names that again had big runs and it is sitting there with the line in the sand that if they get pulled and the market does get a retest of last week's lows, excuse me, on Monday's lows, they're going to get hit as well. Like look at Baidu, right? Had a big, big run. Okay. Had an absolute big run. Uh, for 20, for you know, for 2020, look at this run recently in the last several weeks. But now again, we have just like we have lines of reflection points that we need to kind of reclaim to the upside. You can see here how many times it held right 212, right? Held 212, 212, 212. The five-day moving average is 212. It's touched that as well. If you get another channel and starts claiming down that 212 level, then you have at least another 10 points down. So the great part about this tape is there is something for everybody, but you have to be patient. Again, every single day that the market is open is not going to give you liberty to trade carelessly, throw cautious to the wind, because again, what we've learned and past, you know, past evidence has showed us if you are going to trade careless, okay, you are going to be another statistic. Again, you might get lucky once, you might get lucky twice, but ultimately technical analysis and sentiment is going to take over and everything that you worked so hard for and the confidence that you built, and we talked about this on the weekend video, you're, unfortunately you're going to find yourself with your, with your literally your pants beneath your ankles in the worst place. So guys, I want to wish everybody an amazing uh, 2021. Okay. Uh, I think this is the year, uh, that the thinking trader is going to be proved right. Okay. Whether you're trading to the long side or the short side, don't anticipate, don't guess, let the price action tell you where the next move is going to come. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care guys.